Well, it all started in this alley. <laughs> Go on. Please carry on. <laughs> I say I choke on my my beer because I'm also getting over a cold. Oh. Got that con crud. Yeah, a little bit. Nothing. It's just it's a little man cold, so I got to be more of a baby about it than what it actually is. But that's not why we're here. We're here because it's the end of the tale of four warlords. We made it. We finally made it. Woo! We're here. All of Holy us. Holy shit. Well, all of us. At the same what time. A, what an adventure. <laughs> and it's not 6 a.m. in the morning either. <laughs> I didn't mind that, actually. <laughs> and they give me an excuse from somebody here that, uh, you know, oh, I, I misread the, the messaging, you know. <laughs> I misread the messaging that I scheduled. Hey, the orc is on time. <laughs> Dude, the, the orc's on time, and my kids go to bed at nine or ten, like normal kids, not six thirty-seven. My kids go to bed at eight, dude. Eight. Mine's a terrorist. <laughs> on the watch list. All right. Yep. So let's uh, let's remind everybody. So way back in May, we started with our characters. June, we did core. July was special or rare choice. August was core and a character. September was rare or special. October was whatever we wanted. Warlord's choice. November. <coughs> sorry. Was allies or mercs or kit bash unit. Although it just turned into whatever we needed to finish our army. Which would have been made more sense to put warlord's choice last. But here we are. So with November done and dusted. We have some, some entries to finish up our... Uh, our wards here so let's uh let's head over there gents um and as i bring that up just how, how's everybody doing how, how did you feel about this whole little little tale of four warlords something i've always wanted to do with people um i realized i never want to do it again because it's really hard organizing it but i enjoyed it i i am glad uh it feels good to be done because now I can play video games and not feel as if I should be painting instead. <laughs> <laughs> or do oh, anything yeah. else and feel like I should be painting instead. Dude, uh, same boat. Like, since, like, May, if I'm doing anything but painting at night, just to get this army done, I felt guilty no matter what it was. So uh -huh. I'm 100% I'm with you on that. Yeah. And now I we, don't know what you guys are point. talking about. Because uh, I painted one day a month for the last eleven months. Terry's painted <laughs> a combined seven days. <laughs> speed, speed paint is the shit. You guys really got to come to the dark side. And then I get like a side text from Terry, like, "Hey man, you're gonna be mad." I'm like, "Why?" He's like, "I just knocked out twelve units in like four <laughs> hours." Jeez, dude, That's so funny. Uh, but no, no, all in all, I mean, I, I'm glad you put this together, Chuck. Did it suck at some points? Absolutely. But yeah. was it fun at other points? A hundred percent. I'm glad that we all committed to it. I've never been a part of a Tale of Four Warlords, which I think is pretty badass. Um, if anybody's out there, you know, that's interested in doing it, go for it, man. If you've never done it, it'll give you a little bit of extra motivation to, to get an army painted. And then end result is like, you look at it, you're like, hell yeah, yeah. this looks good, you know? Yeah. I think, uh, as, as people will see shortly, um, when you see all the armies together and done, you know, put them out to display and everything, I mean, it's like... Feel good. That was, you know. Yeah, and, and make sure, get yourself a group of folks like this. Like, we give each other shit, but that's kind of part of it, like, to keep us going and on, on pace for that. Like, if you don't give each other shit, then, you know, you're not, you're not real friends, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Anyway. Look, I'm up first here with my entry for November. So I had my, my kit bash, which was a uh, prophetess on Pegasus. Um, <laughs> trying to remember exactly uh, what was it. It was Neferata's legs, a the Lumineth. Uh, uh, oh, I'm drawing a blank on her. Like the, the, the caster of sorrow, whatever it is, for the yeah. top portion. And then just a, a royal Pegasus that I picked up, and then I think there's a few other like bits, like a dagger or something, to help hide things. But very I got, Chuck, you're a, you are a underrated converter of models. When he you, did, when you really, like, yeah. Go after it. It's this. It's really right. good. So. Right. You did an awesome job. I mean, Thanks. just 
I think I think it goes to Chuck's knowledge of the GW range in general, just mm-hmm. to kind of know what kits would fit with that. And it turned out perfect, man. Like, yeah, yeah, it was it was an awesome kit bash, and I am a little bit of jealous of your your uh, kit bash skilling. So it, it's it's just being brave about it. Actually, here, hold on, like just just some quick insight. What I was doing before this. Oh, hey, rocking the boat here. I took uh, the Grombadil special model that was limited availability. I bought a second one, and I cut him up so I could make a little BSB for my dwarf army. It's going to be on a shield bear that's coming tomorrow. So just if you're out there, just do it. Like, you can't really just look at a model, think of a plan, and then just, just do it. You can't, can't screw it up that badly. And if you do, whatever, it's just plastic. But thank you, guys. I, I appreciate that. Um... Yeah, she was super fun. Uh, obviously, I kept the blue color scheme for the Pegasus itself. Um, I did have problems doing that—that that sheer cloth, because like I like I went with a pink gown for her, like a, like a, a a pink purple red gown. Like I'm not sure what color it kind of actually is, but mixing like a maroon. yeah, mixing that with a natural like healthy <laughs> flesh tone was just. Just I was uh, glazing over and over, and I had to redo it a couple times. That was the only part about that model. I was like, eh, like if I could find a better way to do it, I would have. But, but yeah, no, I, I love the way she turned out. She's super cool. Um, played a game where when I my first game actually with the whole army. Um, took it to the barn and had a good time. Got tabled except for her, so she's uh... a. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, that is a, a special feat. Yeah. Uh, when you have that many Pegasus Knights. Uh, That's well, what I was well, going to say. Yeah. Like, how did, <laughs> how did that happen? You know? Well, uh, with, to be fair with that, it was, um, uh, I was being, I, so I have two versions of this list that I play. I have the nice version and the I'm going to win version. The I'm going to win version is what you think about. I just run my Pegasus as normal. The I'm going to be nice version is I put them in Lance formation, I never break That's it. That's right. Yeah, you didn't say that. Yeah. Because then you can bait them out, you can play with them, it's, and they're hard to maneuver because they're huge. But um, I haven't played the I'm going to win version of this army yet, but I plan to someday, probably against one of you. Be like, hey, welcome. <laughs> Thanks for driving in three hours out here, and I'm going to beat your ass. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But yeah, I'm super proud of it, super happy. Um, whoop, that's the wrong one. There's one. And uh, yeah, it was a nice little capstone to the whole army. Uh, and yeah, it was nice doing a different Pegasus colors throughout my army. I know you, you know, it, it, I I was worried I was going to end up doing all white, but they actually look good not doing all the same color. Yeah. All right. Next up, Mike. Yes. This is. Well, we're gonna we're gonna give you a pause because the full army picture has that banner done. I don't know why you sent me the picture with the banner not done on it. Did you notice that? What are you talking? About? Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. The one banner isn't done, and in the picture it isn't done as well. The, what you're looking at in that that picture is the yeah. actual banner being done for the um, uh, archers, the uh, peasant peasant archers. Gotcha. Yeah, I just want to call it out like it's not the shame you. It's just we knew it. It's fine. He actually he accomplished the goal, so we're good. Shame. But... Oh yeah, I don't care. Shame me all you want. <laughs> I'm not gonna shame you. Sh- oh, Terry can. No, I'm talking to Terry. <laughs> Terry, you can kiss my. No, I'm just joking. No, it's just. It got to a point where it was like, okay, I need to get this done. Um, I had pneumonia last month, and I built a fence, and it kind of took a lot away or took away a lot of time that I had, kind of etched out for this because I was completely worn down because I'd work eight hours and I get home for another five hours putting a fence up every night. Yeah, with like floodlights everywhere, and then I'm like, why am I so tired every day, and why am I coughing, and why can't I breathe? Oh, I'm just going through it right now, and then. They misdiagnosed me from the beginning of the month when I said that I had bronchitis, and I find out three weeks later I had pneumonia the whole time. So oh. it was just kind of a slog to get through it. Um, and I also I still have eighteen um, of the uh, minute arms that I want to to finish up. Right. 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 Um, but I, that list right there that you're looking at can be a two thousand point list. So, um, but yeah. Shame me. I, that's the. I think that's the only thing that I didn't finish was that that those two banners. Uh, the other right. one broke off. That's with my um, Knights of the Realm. I still haven't actually put that together yet. Like, you know, uh, threw a pin in there or anything like that. But all in all, I'm happy. 
regardless, I think the army looks great together. I'm, I, I just, I'm, I'm proud of myself and I'm proud of you guys for pushing me to get to this point to where I can look at another Finnish army in my cabinet. Yeah. So you, so you yeah. don't, you don't have much work to finish it up to get it where you, you know, for full completion. So that, that's awesome. Love to look mm-hmm. at a trebuchet. Um, which where, where's that? Where's that trebuchet from? Is that is that the GW? One? That's the GW. Is it yep. okay? Yep. Right. They they had to redo it in one of the articles that I read. I guess they they redid some portions of it that way they can because I guess the old resin uh, version that they had before just it was I guess a slog to put together. Yeah. Um. So I, I read somewhere that they they fix a few things up on it. Um. It ended up being a pretty easy build. Um. It was a fun paint job just because it was all wood. You know. I mean. Did a Zenith highlight, use some speed paints like Terry, and uh, and it turned out pretty good, man. It turned out pretty good. Yeah, no, actually, it's funny because like I didn't know that's the one it was because I'm not used to seeing it. Right, right, right. But I wanted to buy it just because I don't know. I wanted. I missed out on the Grail Knights, and um, that was in my my cart. And I'm like, well, I'm just gonna buy this then, I guess. So I ended up purchasing that. Um, so the Grail Knights, and uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, don't sleep on stone throwers in this game, man. No, no, no. no. And that's another thing is is uh, the last time I was out in PA, um, it was it March last year when I, I so, came yeah. out there? It was March, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I just got crushed every time I played somebody with some kind of, you know, artillery, right? I like every time I'd go up the board, I would just get shot at the whole time. And uh, there was nothing I had on my end to kind of keep people back as well, you know? So, um, yeah, I mean, it. I'm, I'm happy to have it, but I would rather have Grail Knights, to be honest with you. That's for so. sure. Yeah, but no, no, it looks good. I love the, like I said, the red and blue came out good. Uh, can't wait till we show off the whole army picture here later on in the show. But next, Neil. Uh-oh. Here we go. Here we go, Neil. Look at these lovely, lovely chariots on screen right now. I simply love that sculpt. I, I don't like the chariot sculpt, but I love the horse sculpt. Well, the um, so the thing about it is, uh, I have to I have to admit to I'm not fully done. Um, there are the two riders that are in there. Mm-hmm. Are, I just I popped off some uh, sea guard to toss them in there just to you know, make it kind of look more official. If you look at the model itself, you'll see some of the uh, the, the ropes or the lines coming off the horses. Um, sure. Don't go anywhere. They will be. Um, there is a rider, just like with the lion chariots, who's controlling, you know, both of the horses with like four lines, you know, two lines coming off each hand. Um, and it's going to look really sweet uh, when that gets done. And I got another, it's going to be an archer shooting out there. And then there's like a stack of spears in there, you know, showing that they can switch over the spears too. So uh, it will be uh, much cooler than what it currently looks. Um, I really like the way it turned out, though, for the most part. I did both those chariots in a night. Um, so I think I, I was literally, literally, I started when the Browns game started and I finished just before it ended. Was it the, <laughs> was it the Steelers uh, game? Uh, no, uh, no, it was literally Monday night's game. Uh, last okay. night. Yeah. All right. so. <laughs> Neil, I, I got to say, and people will see it come up here soon is the, uh, full army picture. I know you don't give yourself enough credit and you always brag on how, how, how you paint, but yeah. that army look, that army together, dude, I was yeah. like, hell yeah. When yeah. I saw well, that, I was like. I was like that. The vision was there. It looked good, dude. You you knocked it out of the park. Yeah, 100%. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm pretty happy with it. It's uh, the the light blue helps. It just pops really Actually, nice. It does. Yeah, especially the, against some of those browns and everything else. Just real nice uh, color coordination. If I do say the, so myself. Yeah, the blue, the gray, and the, that yellowish gold just all work together so well. Yeah. So. Yeah, the yeah, gold yeah. makes that. The gold makes the blue pop. The contrast there is between that and the browns and all that. Like it, it looks good. Yeah, yeah. And it's just the, uh, you know, finding some some cloth areas on some of these models to to get that light blue on. Um, sometimes harder than you know, for kind of picking your spots where that should be. You know, because you don't want to overdo it either. So yeah. you know, um, you know, I think the sisters have a lot of it on there, but just just because of who they are and, and what they are, I think it's good. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, because uh, you know they're. They're the sisters, right? So they're, they're just looking a little softer with the light blues all over the place. But um, even that, just also yeah, like the muted know. grass flocking you use, just really helps it pop more. It, like it's like I know, like yeah. that probably like you're like you're like me. You didn't intentionally do that, but you subconsciously did it, and it looks really good. Yeah. So that's multiple <laughs> different types of flock all in there. 
Um, that is actually, so the chariot in that picture is not even glued on to that yet. That's that funny. is wet mud and <laughs> wet flock out there. So that will, it looks a little bit raggedy right there. They're waiting for it to dry before I can clean some of that up. But, uh, but yeah, <laughs> it's just sitting on top there, probably cemented down into that dried mud at this point. But, uh, um, also, so these models are printed at 10% their actual size too. So, um, keep that in mind too. If you're doing, these are, uh, last word ventures, um, chariots and everything. So, um, they, they print just fine at their full, full height, uh, unless you're doing dragons for them, then absolutely print at least 10% bigger. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I like, I like how much of the space of the base they take up, you know? So, um, but yeah, these are, these are um, when they're actually bigger. on there, they'll be, It'll be even cooler, but uh, yeah, I appreciate that, guys. Neil, they're 10% bigger. Yeah, I printed at 110%. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I'm just I'm just a big fan of like heroic scale, like Age of Sigmar type scale. Yeah, you come with yeah. four. Um, I think I've talked about this in the past, but um, if you're listening to this for the first time, it's for 3D printed models. Sometimes you don't get the depth. You know, if they're a little bit smaller, so if you print a little bit bigger, you can get just that little extra depth in there so that, like, washes hit better, um, all that kind of stuff. So um, if you're partial to washes and contrast paints, that's what you got to do. I think most of us here are, so. <laughs> hey! <laughs> I'm outnumbered. I'm outnumbered. I'm not, I'm not part of the, the peasantry here. Do you have a painting award yet, Mike? I actually do. Okay, all right, all right. I was, I was, it, how do you guys like that gray on the horses there? I do. I love that gray a lot. That gray looks really. Oh, that really is good. a that's Dude, a white primer with non oil and a uh, a dry brush over top of that. That's it. Boom, easy. I hate I hate my life. Yeah. <laughs> God. Uh, I'm I, I try I'm trying cheap. so hard. I'm trying. Your stuff so looks great hard. too, Mike. Don't worry. We love you. No, no, I'm trying so hard to like do what Terry does. I just can't, I can't bring myself to do it. And he's been like hounding me for two years or three years now since contrast paint came out. Like, dude, this is it. This is what you should do now. Now, actually, really quick, there's a slap chop. It's like a slap chop over slap chop. Chop chop. So, Chop, chop chop. Have you seen that, Terry? I uh, yes, I sure did. Dude, it, so you so you literally. <laughs> You slap chop it, right? You do the you do the grays and the white white um, dry brushes. Then you put your colors down. Then you do the white over everything that you just did again, and then you get a brighter color up from that, and it looks freaking amazing. It's like or you can do the same color, yeah, or the same color. It doesn't yeah. matter. It could be a, a lighter color, same color. It could be a different color, right? Like it it, it is uh, it's insane how good that how good it looks man it, it, yeah. it, it it's got me thinking like maybe the, i should just start doing that the video try. is is called like chop chop or double chop chuck i don't want to like you know you can plug it i don't care i, I don't want to plug somebody else but it's you can plug somebody else who is it is it once you i i don't know the guy's name oh, okay. right. but I'll try, uh, I'll try and find it put it in the it's don don Cerritos. Don Cerri yeah. So, okay. yeah 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 anyway it's uh I, a lot of us have been doing that anyway with like but with primer so like if i want if I'm doing slap chop, I might do it with like a dark brown, light brown, lighter brown, white, um, like like Xenothal, um, to try and get some of those. And his method is basically like slap chop everything, then dry brush it again, then slap chop it again. And so like your greens now have two layers of the same green, but so, they're darker. So are you essentially it, are you essentially slap chopping it, Xenotheling it twice. very lightly, and then slap chopping yeah. it? Okay. Yeah. I, mean, I, I make your, sense. Yeah, I get it. You slap chop it with base coats and then you and then you dry brush it again, and then you slap chop the contrast on again, and it gives you like some some real, uh, depth. real depth. Yeah, yeah. it's crazy, um, dude. It looks so. I was like, and he's yeah. a Don's like a world renowned artist. I think he's from the Filipinos mm -hmm. or P whatever it is. That's not um, how you say that, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Philippines. Philippines. He's from the Philippines. Jeez. Talk's apology out. videos coming out next week. <laughs> yeah, I'm not apologizing. It's Mike's apology. I just, I just hit record. Yeah. No, no, but, uh, but, but he's like world renowned. Like he's like the glaze master. Like that's all he does yeah. on his channel is glazes. And then like all, all of a sudden, like the last month, it's been chop chop, and he makes it just look. It, it, it literally looks like 
he spent hours upon hours on these miniatures and he has it. I mean, it's, it's amazing. That he figured that out, I see. You know, just to do it that way. I, I'd be yeah, curious Mike, to give it a go. Cause like I tried slap chop, like just, just when it came out, I was like, all right, let's see what it is. It does. And I was quicker without it with the way I currently paint. So I was like, okay, this isn't for me, but whatever. But if it adds more detail and it's about the same time, then yeah, I'll, I'm well, you gotta to figure go. when you're putting a and Terry Terry is right. You can't put the same color, but <laughs> he suggests putting a lighter color yeah. than what you put down before. And then it's literally like you just edge highlighted everything because you have now have that light color over those whites that you just put down over top of what you just slap chopped. Like it's it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I would give it a shot. Definitely yeah, I'll, give it a I'll, shot. Give, I'll give it a go for, for old world in particular. You know. Like Mike talking about, like want to try that slap chop and all that kind of stuff. But if you're doing a big unit, I mean, do it right. Yeah, you know, then, then then take not. your time on the characters like you always do. But if you're really, you got a, like a big army or try like you got a horde army, man, God bless you if you're gonna. I I, I, I think <laughs> because I'm I'm doing dwarves next. I know I've talked about it before, but I think that I might end up doing it with the majority of those units in that army. And then whatever the hero models I have, I'm just going to take my time on. The blessing yeah. you have with dwarves, Mike, since I, I have painted an army, leave the mm -hmm. heads off. Everything you can. Really? Leave. Yeah, because... Oh, I did you, that you, with fire you, slayers, because you get the beard, the beard's in the way. Yeah, well, yeah the beard's like, in the way, which is fine, but like you can paint the entire army very simply, very quickly, slap chop or not, with the heads off, in a mm -hmm. day. And then spend the next like several weeks painting the beards, looking nice. Like I put highlights in my beards, and because whenever you're looking at a dwarf model, you see this ball and you see this beard and your eyes focus on that beard. So that's what you put the effort into on the models. Ah, that makes sense. That's a good call. Yeah, you, you, you call. crush a dwarf army like it's nothing. It's mostly silver, one color, and then you just have fun painting beards. <clears throat> Which are actually fun to paint. I hate to say it. Well, they're fun to paint. <laughs> uh, you know, 3D printer goes burr, I yeah. guess. So. <laughs> but before it does, Harry go burr. Harry with what is what this? Up? one nice big unit of boar boys here. I see, I see. Yep. So how the how these go? How was how was the joy of painting these? So this was awesome. So this is the only um, these are the only GW kits that I used okay. uh, throughout the process. Everything was Avatars of War. So the boar boys uh, are the actual GW kit, um, and then the chariots alongside them are also the gw kit but i swapped the 1980s boars out for some scaled down avatars of war boars from their chariot and i scaled those down from 100 mm. percent to 70 oh, percent yeah. um so that they would fit and it's like the perfect um the perfect uh scale down actually it might have been 80 percent now that i think about it but it was scaled down quite a bit um if you, told, if you told me that this was all avatar or all gw i would have been like yep i believe you yeah so right well. yeah so if you look at if you pivot over to the boar chariots um that was my conversion right so mm -hmm. i finagled the boars you have to like fiddle with the harnesses quite a bit yeah. um because the it's a you know 22 year old kit or something um but i was able to keep the harnesses by just like um i melted them a little bit with like a torch and then bent them uh yeah. like around and then chopped a few things that um but uh did a little bit of did my on the boar boys did my emblem on the banner um i went back to for these guys the dirty down rust yep. uh effect um which just oh man i mean look you can tell these guys are speed painted you know they look good to me but they don't look the same as like you know sitting next to like heels airbrushed you know you can tell the differences but you know, for orcs and for a uh, horde army, like this, is, it was so fast. I started all these on Saturday. I did them during the Ohio State game. Everything in the picture that has the boar boys, the how many, chariots. How many and brushes the did you? How many brushes did you snap during that Ohio State game? Uh, I mean, none, okay. uh, because they had they had it coming. Um, <laughs> but fair. Uh, fair. I, but that, yeah, that day after club day, we were watching the Penn State game, and it was like forty something before the half, and we'd finished yes. our meal. And and the uh, waitress came over. She's like, "You guys gonna hang out, get some beer, watch the game?" I'm like, "That game's over. We're we're done." <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Like that was what the was Michigan exact, game should have looked like. It was the exact opposite uh, of the game you had. 
Yeah, I know. They um so I did that's but I basically did the same thing you did, Neil, but I did it on Saturday and I just I just banged these guys out. I did a few touch ups on Sunday. Um uh mostly because I took a picture and the banner was gray like Mike's also. And so I, I was like, crap, I'm gonna get so much grief if I don't paint this. <laughs> um, See, grief for the win. Grief for yeah, the win. and I owed because I missed last session. So I did the chariots and the boar boys and the war boss. Yep. Um and so this gets me right over um right uh, once I put upgrades in, I can get myself to two thousand points. Very nice. Hey, yeah. He looks. He looks very much like the uh, the picture we we used to you the first day you missed the, the orc getting punched in the face. So there you go. It works. That's right. Full, full circle. <laughs> I should have. I should have painted my banner like that. That would be amazing. <laughs> but yeah, but that was that was good. Um, good effort, everybody, all around, uh, except for you, Mike, uh, for failing to paint your mom. No I'm kidding. Neil failed. failed Neil failed, failed to paint too. my one banner. No, it's fine. You'll have it painted in the next week. Out of, you'll 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 stay up late tonight painting it out of shame. I I can tell. I uh so Carl finished printing printing those models for me last night at about eight o'clock. He's just like he's like man. He's just like he's like they're done. I'm like bro. I I can't I can't drive in fifty minutes to you and fifty minutes back while I gotta paint these chariots. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it, man, but uh, that's too far of a drive. Uh, I'll be painting till two a.m. So no, that's, yeah, that's, that's right. it's not worth losing the sleep at this point. It's it's yeah. done. Sure, we all have five more minutes of touch ups to do, but we'll get we'll get there. Yeah. All right. Well, with that said, I guess it's time to look at some full armies, isn't it? <laughs> Any volunteers, and who wants to go first? Terry, <clears throat> Terry, Terry should go first. Wow. <laughs> All right, we'll do Terry first. Like you said, he missed the last one, so he's going well, first. Well, here is a whole big army. Look at that sucker. It doesn't even fit on the screen. I got to zoom out. Right. Yeah, well, there we go. Perfect. Look at this. All right, how does it feel to have this? Mighty wall already at your fingertips, Terry. I know you have many walls at your fingertips, but this is just the latest one. This is the most I've painted since I had surgery in 2019. Wow. Um, wow. It was really fun to go from one to the next. It was fun to get into 3D, the 3D printing. Mm -hmm. And it was fun to create a bunch of stress for you personally yep. while you were trying to schedule around me. Um, <laughs> and and it was also fun, like I, I like I've got a whole sitting right next to the contrast paints. I have a whole the same collection Mike has of Pro Acryls, and I love those paints. I use some of them, like I used for the banner, like the crimson color that I use. Like I use those are all Pro Acryls. Mm -hmm. um, I love that that paint range but it was really fun to like mess around with some new stuff uh i had never done a yellow i had never done contrast yellow i had never used the dirty down rust effects and like to mess with that and get to do a little bit of conversion um all that kind of tickled like a lot of different spots on the the hobby checklist and gave me something to kind of look forward to because i was kind of like honestly like kind of like getting away from the painting hobby prior to this yeah um, and it, so it was fun to kind of like, you know, connect with you guys on that and, and kind of reconnect with the hobby a little bit. And then also on a side note that like my daughter, who's about to turn five is in the background and she knows what orcs are now and, oh, you know, more boys and she's like, you know, she helped me arrange, uh, I had to fix it a little bit, but she helped me arrange all the models. Um, you know, if I, I, I wish I would have had, a if I I wish I would have had the same kind of backgrounds that you guys had with like the scenic stuff that would have really made this look cool. Um, but unfortunately you get a, a radiator and a bench and a table, <laughs> um, you know, that's, that's shiny and reflecting light. Um, so, but I mean, dude, uh, just super fun to, to kind of go through it. Um, the right. only recommendation I would have, uh, so something you mentioned at the beginning of the podcast is I, I think like everyone was kind of like, oh, like we're done, like cool. I think one of the things that made it stressful at times is that we had a floating calendar. And so it would get to the end of the month and it'd be like, oh, this time it's Terry's fault or this time it's, you know, Terry and Neil or whatever. And uh, mostly mine, 
if we're being honest <laughs> but like so there'd be like this kind of like well we'll do it on like if we had like a date like boom turn-ins are on this day podcast is on this day every single month we had like a like a set calendar i think that would have maybe like taken the stress off a little bit um and it certainly would have I don't know that it would have changed my behavior of painting at the last minute, but I, 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 I'm not sure if you remember. I tried to do that in the chat long ago of and then we did. We were that, resisting, and you said yeah. no. I can't do that. You said I can't commit to that. I'm not saying I didn't resist it. I'm saying in hindsight, I think I shouldn't have resisted. That's fair. That's fair. Well, well I mean, yeah. I get it too, because also we were going through a lot of months where, like all the holidays were at the end of the month for some reason. So it happens. It's yeah. fun. We got through it. We got through it. We're there. And then yeah. the army looks great. I love it. The scenic basing looks wonderful. I like the inclusion of the giant. Um, Barn ready. Yeah. It's Dude, it looks, good. It, 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 it looks good, man. It looks good. I was happy as hell when I saw those pictures come through in our group chat. I'm like, dude, it, it yeah. just, yes. It yeah. looks good. It's a great yeah, looking army. Time Ohio's coming, coming to the barn with fully painted models, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right way. Well, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm requiring fully painted for this uh, this upcoming Tayrathi. So, <clears throat> and that's the show. Respect to you guys for getting it done. And next, because he's just next to Terry on the pictures, Neil. All right. Let's let's look at this beautiful high elf army here. Walk us through it. Tell mm-hmm. us tell us what you love. Tell us what you would want to redo. Tell us why this is going to wipe the floor of all of us. Well, um, well, you know, what's funny is I was listening to a YouTube, you know, whatever, just something like how to win with high elves, right? You know, it's just some background shit when I'm painting, right? I don't really care. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I really don't care. Like, like they could have told me, like, you know, you got to take a thousand dragons. I'd be like, okay, cool. Right. So he's <laughs> talking and he's talking. He's talking. Now, I, I designed this army because if you guys remember, the theme of this army, as you look at it, was it was supposed to be a scout army. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, for what's going on in the old world right now, they're kind of invading into uh, the Badlands, but they got to move fast. Right. So you got all scouts, you got um, you've got all skirmishing units and you've got chariots that move quick and you've got flying units and all this kind of crap. Right. And so that was the theme. And so as this guy's talking through how to win the high elves, he's like he's like, you know, really, the like the only way the way I'm kind of playing right now is with a big group of sisters. And you've got to run them. You've got to run them, you know, as your core. And so you got to have a handmade general. And I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ. People are going to look at this thing and be like, oh, this, this gamey bastard. Well, to, to be perfectly fair, I've done it with both my old world armies because I did the same. I didn't do a, I did a, a theme with my high elves and it ended up being lots of sisters. And then now it's all Pegasus. So I'm, I'm in the same boat as you. I'm trying to be narrative and fluffy. And for some reason, it's, it's just good. Yeah. So that was nice. That was nice to hear. However, you still got to be able to pilot it. And I'm pretty sure, um, it's it's not going to work very well for me. <laughs> so, well, looking okay, at your army now, I think you can just point and shoot, and you'll be fine. Yeah, that's that's kind of the hope, really. Uh, but yeah, so from from left to right, you got lion chariots, you got um, you've got shadow warriors, um, you got the loathers sky chariots, which you know, as far as how their usefulness in the game, uh, I don't care. They look cool. Uh, you know, so the whole theme is that the. Uh, the Shadow Warriors are chariot runners, so you just put those guys out in front, which is how I kind of put them in the picture here, mm-hmm. and uh, then the chariots just all charge right through them. And so they hold the things up that I want to be held up while the sisters shoot the rest of your army, and uh, and then you pick up your toys, mate. You know, pick up your toys. <laughs> you know, you know what the sky cutters are actually for. I, I've I've been thinking through this because I want to add a sky cutter to my army when I come buy one. You know what you know what you need to do, Neil. What's up? Put your level four mage on the sky cutter. Really? Yeah. Four on there? Mm-hmm. Now, what about cannonballs? Sure, whatever. You've... That's fine. They're not. I, I cannonball. Oh, one will... cannonball. Okay. You got to dust that mage. <laughs> I, I don't think it now because you can get like a you get like a magic item on it, give it some protection. It's going to go wherever it wants. It's going to be out of range of all that their casters, where everyone. Sure. I, I, I'm. I'm. Give think... some walk between worlds. Yeah. No I, I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, not too bad. Just to make this even worse. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, the army looks beautiful. I mean, complete 3D sculpts, pretty much, you said, uh, obviously, except for... Uh, yeah, there's uh, there's there's uh, some GW bits on the uh, um, on the character on top of the Great Eagle. Sure, yeah. He's kind of a kit bash, but outside of that, 
Um, everything is 100% uh, 3D print. So Yeah, and it looks like a high elf army that I remember from back in the day. So 3D prints or not, you know, it's 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 a high elf army, that, and that is awesome. Yeah, and what I wanted to go with here is, like, I, it had to be close enough so that you could recognize what everything is. Mm-hmm. And so you're like, well, what is that again? You know, so you know what it is, right? But it's also... Um, I think you'd have to try pretty hard to find somebody with an army exactly like this. So, yep. Nope. I love it. I, I go back to us real quick. You know, I I'll put a pause on you real quick. Then go back to Terry real quick. Cause I forgot to ask him this. Terry, what's the next thing you want to add to your army? Cause then Neil, I'll propose the same question to you. <laughs> so the next thing that I want that I'm going to add to the army is a set of goblin and wolf riders. Um, and, but the thing that I really wanted to add to my army that I just couldn't find time to get to, uh, was, uh, siege, siege weapons. Okay. So bolt throwers or something like, uh, or a catapult or stone thrower or rock lobber or whatever it is. Nice. Nice. Yeah, no, that's good. Good fill in. Neil, what, what would you add next to your high elf army then? Uh, you know, this, uh, this pretty cool guy, uh, got me a Eltharian, uh, classic model, uh, mm-hmm. on a Griffin yep. and a Griffin would look pretty nice in here with all this kind of stuff. Now I will say, I don't know how I'm going to, I don't know if I'm going to use that exact model or not because with everything being 10% bigger, the problem is that Griffin looks a little bit small. So I don't know how I'm going to, mm. going to do that because it's small model anyway, compared to even like the newer GW stuff. <laughs> And then you in- increase things ten percent. Now you're at a heroic scale where you know your uh, your wizard is now bigger than your griffin, or at least half the size. You know? <laughs> and Just so now you're like, yeah. So I don't big know. Old we do that. Big old uh, we may we may see about uh, yeah. Maybe give a real big uh, tactical rock. We'll see how we do it, but we'll we'll make it work somehow. Okay, I like it. I like it. All right, Mike, you're up next. This gorgeous looking army. Uh one banner aside, it's in the shadow, so actually it blends kind of nicely. You can't see that it's unpainted. <laughs> How's it feel having this beautiful painted army here? <laughs> uh, no, um, all jokes aside, I feel great about it. Uh, my son was with me today when I was putting the, pi- the pictures together, um, and he was just like, oh, like asking me all these questions about it. Um, I love, I just, I love how it it turned out, red, white, and blue. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Corona is, is, you know, my favorite, uh, territory, um, in Bretonia, right. Um, it goes along with my lore, like Neil was talking about earlier, but, um, I'm pretty basic with it because my goal was to paint the starter set, Yep. you know, add a few units here and there on top of that starter set. And then over the, you know, over time, then add additional units from there. Um, it was a challenge to paint all those horses. Um, my Boy, was favorite it. Mo- Boy, was it. It was huh? more challenging it than was. I expected with all that barding. It was a pain in the ass, yeah. yeah. But with that being said, I'm glad I challenged myself and put myself through that. My favorite model by far is my Duke. Um, yeah. I can't say enough of how awesome of a sculpt it is and how well it turned out for me. Usually I don't like to, to toot my own horn or talk good about my paint jobs because usually I don't like my paint jobs. But but when that thing was done, man, I looked at it, I'm like, I'm, it, it just, yeah. I was like, hell yeah. It just, it, it, it just. Somebody, uh, somebody stole your picture. Yeah, to... that's true. We got to talk, oh, my gotta, God. talk about that real quick. Hold on. <laughs> mention it, mention uh, it. Your, your picture of your Duke. Where, where did it end so, up? So what was funny is I've been scouting eBay for, um, what's her name? The prophetess, the oh, name Lady character. Yeah, yeah, a lady same. at least a car. So I'm looking everywhere. I'm I'm typing it in there. You know, it's like $190 here, $180 in British pounds here, you know, $200, whatever it is, you know, just completely ridiculous prices, right? For people that live over in the UK, they just go right down the road to the local GW and they pick it up. Yeah. Um, you know, in Warhammer World. But I'm looking through and I'm like, I like scroll real fast past this Duke model. I'm like, Oh, that's cool. It looks good. And then I was like, wait a second. And I scroll back up. I'm like, that's my model. <laughs> Somebody was using my model as a stock picture for painted model, you know, painted because people will sell their services on eBay. Like, yeah. you know, we'll, we'll, you know, paint a Duke or whatever. And I'm like, 
what the hell is this shit? So I reached out to, I reached out to the guy. I'm like, Hey, I'm like, you're using my picture. What's up with that? He's like, Oh, that's one of my artists are using, I guess they're using your picture. I, I'm, I apologize for that. I'll take it down right away. But yeah, one of his artists for his, his actual eBay store or whatever was using a stock picture that he had no clue. So the way I look at it is this guy might be using other people's pictures. Of course he probably is telling yeah. this guy, Oh yeah, these paint jobs I'm putting together. This is one of them. And it's not even his paint job. These people are probably ended up getting these models. A scam. Dude. That, right. Right. Like, like a base coat and a wash. And then they're well, done. Hey, like, here you go. Did you, did you <laughs> post a picture of that on like your Instagram ever? No, I sent it to the, to, to our, uh, right. to our inner so, circle chat. Yeah. So there's two chance because you put it on WhatsApp. So there's either two places this person grabbed it from. Either they're like some Russian spy that oh, was no, on, no, our, I put it on WhatsApp. Instagram. Okay. I thought you meant like the picture of like the eBay. No, 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 no. I meant, I meant the actual picture. So there's three places. Oh, it's on my Instagram. Either it was stolen yeah, off yeah. our WhatsApp by a Russian spy. Um, mm -hmm. it was stolen off your Instagram. So someone follows you. Well, hopefully they like the picture. I did put that picture also on the YouTube. So then maybe they subscribe to this YouTube channel. So they're a follower, oh. so I'm saying, hey, fair game. You know, you, you like know what, subscribe. man? We we all all people who paint and are in 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 this hobby, they copy of other people. Like the majority of my paint job, I took from Fletcher Paints. Oh, you yeah. know, over the yeah, I it's, mean his, his yeah. So I mean, it, it's it's I guess it's a I don't know. I mean, I I was mad, but at the same time, like holy shit, somebody actually likes your stuff. My stuff. They yeah, thought, they, they, thought to, they could make money like, off of it, so there you yeah, go. Right, right. So I was like, you know, I took it as a compliment. At the same time, I was just like, you gotta take it down. Like I, I you know, at least they did. Yeah, at you, least you they can't did. Be fool people to think that's your their, your your own personal work, you know. But right, right. It's, it's kind of flattering. And then, and then, but 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 that's my thing is, is like, I do sell stuff on eBay. I do sell painted stuff all the time. I mean, I literally just sold, sold that Godrek that I painted last year for three hundred fifty bucks yeah. two weeks ago. Um, so I paint, so I don't want like, you know, if that, if they're not living up to that, to that paint job at all, I don't want it to, then, then somebody that buys it thinks it's me that's painting that for them, even though they probably would never do that. But yeah, yes, that was sir. just, it was crazy. Cause I, I like, like I said, I scrolled real fast past. I'm like, Oh, that looks nice. And I kept going. And then I just, did just like a dead stop. I'm like, <laughs> wait a second. And I scroll back up. I'm like, the hell is this shit like the that's chances you actually find of that too that's pretty like, good yeah oh yeah oh it's very small a hundred percent i mean i uh yeah like it, i just don't know how that happened it was just a, it was a, a crazy coincidence but um but yeah man i mean overall that is my favorite paint job of the army i love the, the um the paladin too um the bsb um it turned out good man yeah. i love how the uh, uh, Green Knight pops like he yep. does because you can definitely tell him throughout the whole army. You can know exactly where that guy's at. Oh, yeah. um, but uh, I'm just happy, man. I'm happy that I, I it, you know, just between work and kids and all that, it, it does get tough at times to commit to an army, right? right? So it's been a good while since I've actually got a, a, a fully painted army. Um, you know, and so I, I appreciate you putting this together. I'm, I'm glad that I accepted the challenge. Glad Terry and, and Neil joined, joined in on the fun. Um, especially Terry, cause I see him at work all the time and I'm like, dude, paint you know, what's stuff. up? You got to paint your shit. Paint and, stuff and, and, uh, yeah. And then even Terry was like, Terry was like, what color do you think I should paint my army? I was like, I think you should paint it yellow. And I didn't think he'd go with it. I just thought He's, you know, just fishing for ideas, and then he actually went with it and turned out freaking – I'm not taking any credit. I'm just saying, like, it turned out freaking awesome. But that was just the banner that we had back and forth, just like, you know, I have no idea what I'm gonna paint, how I'm going to paint this army. I was like, you just do a yellow, and then he did, and then it just went from there. Now look at it, you yeah, know. It's great. One little idea turned into a freaking a wah, you know. Yep. So. Well, what would you add to this army next? Um, I have a 3D printer now. Um, it is finally calibrated. I am going to add, um, some grail knights. Okay. I'm going to add a prophetess, um, grail knights and a prophetess. It's, it's, it's a toss up between one of the two. The prophetess will be an easier print because it's just one model. Yep. Uh, but I found some really sweet grail knights out there that I want to paint up and I'm going to paint them as in like a crusade type paint job. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just pumped. I got the 3d printer and now I'm just going to be able to add to this army. Um, I'm not going to do that anytime soon because I really want to work on a Mordheim warband. 
um, and then on to uh, some dwarves nice. next. So well, there you go. I see. Yep. Don't have to add to it now. It's just what would you? So prophetess. Or... Yep. Sounds good. All right, and then last but not least, the wings of Paravon, my my Bretonian army. Um, much to what Mike did, I started with the starter set and just added whatever I wanted to, which was all Pegasus afterwards. Um, I also have a, a few uh, <clears throat> uh, honorable mentions up here. I'll kind of zoom in on them. Uh, my club clubmate Bob Chica, he's a professional commission artist. Evil Bob's uh, painting. Check him out on Facebook. Uh, not the best angle of this, but he painted up. I picked up the uh, the prophetess on foot and on horse whenever they were made to order and did some trades with him and he painted them up for me. So those are uh, nice additions to the army, but I did not paint them, but just nice little fun additions. Yeah, just in general, I, I <coughs> excuse me, I was surprised at how much I loved painting this army uh, with all the blue. Um, the knights were the, were kind of the biggest slog. The the Pegasus knights were second, but, but that's because I kept my brush control was off, and I, you know, I'd get the blue on the wing, and I'd go touch up the wing, and then I'd screw something else up. It, that was like a nonstop process, but you know, I was happy with the way they came out. So they're in that lance formation. If I want them to be where they're landing, um, the uh, surprise on this whole thing of of what I love most to paint, my favorite thing to paint here, was the uh, Knights of the Realm on foot with the the great weapons. I picked up that box because they just looked cool, and I didn't think I was going to want them, and I kept ten of them. And boy, they were so fun to paint. I want a huge, big unit of them. They're so, so fun. <clears throat> yeah, they do look awesome. So that's real cool right there, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, and actually, too, I was like, well, they're not on Pegasus, so it didn't make sense. So like, I've kind of themed the whole story with the knights. Is There's the errant knights who are just getting used to being knights. And then they're being led by an, an extra, essentially, errant knight. Um, and then the other knights, they're trying to earn their Pegasus wings, so they're out to prove himself so i'll be more full full hardy with them um and then their leader is actually a pegasus knight because i gave him a pegasus knight helm whose pegasus died but he is willing to train other knights to be on pegasus and then the knights of the realm on foot they're also they were former peg knights who the pegasus have died but they haven't stopped grieving yet so they refuse to ride any other mount <laughs> so it did like a whole story so it's all like still pegasus focused even if something's not on a pegasus but, yeah, I'm just thrilled. I love the color scheme. That blue was super fun to paint. Super felt super smooth to paint. I love the unified color scheme of, of Bretonia. Um, I liked it a lot more than I thought. I'm glad because I would never have done the everybody different type color scheme. I would, I would have pulled my hair out. But, yeah, super thrilled. And if I was to add something next to this army, oh, boy. Well, it'd probably be a trebuchet, I think. <clears throat> just to have just to have that range artillery in there, um, I'd probably get a three D printed one though, if I'm honest, because I, I like I wanted to be a little bit chunkier. But there, yeah. there's a ton of, of good options out there. Yeah, I, I I've rarely seen the GW one, but uh, yeah, I I think that's what I would add next. But I have other hobby plans coming up, so that'll wait a little bit. Well, I hope. Uh... I hope what people take from this too, if, if they watched all the way to the end, um, is you got four uh, wildly different painters and uh, wildly different painting techniques, you know, between all these armies, they all look good, right? So, um, you know, regardless of, you know, how you go about it, paint your shit. Yeah. <laughs> right. A hundred percent. Get it done. It, it'll look good regardless of how you paint at the end yeah fully yep. banned army just always looks spectacular with the with the, with the effort you can pull out so 100 percent. and then there's the stoic terry no comment you I know hate, i hope I, nobody you know learned anything that's what he's saying you know what i was doing i was counting models and so i no, happened to notice that neil and keel both were below 60 models or at right about i'm at about 90 95 I was counting yours. You are the closest, uh, Chuck. Uh, so you've got, it looks like 36. 36, 18, 12. Yeah. So, so you're, 40, you're in the, like, you're, you're like in the, the high 70s, high low 70s. 80s here. Okay. Yeah. Um, if I had painted 
as much as long, like the same amount of time that you guys painted, I would probably have 4,000 points. Oh, like that sure. is, that is the power of like, you know, so you've got, you can take all the time in the world, like Mike did and have an incredible looking army, or you can go as fast as possible and still have something that looks great to, yeah. to put on the table. And that, um, you know, I regret not pushing all the way to, to get to, you know, to show that like 180 models or something, but, um, but to have a 2000 point army, it was uh, two days a month, not even two four to six hour sessions every month. Um, pops. Yeah, but and, uh, it does have its own skill, right? Like, yeah. Yeah, who's going to be able to do that? <laughs> it does. You've been doing this for a while, right? You know, so this is not your first rodeo. But, uh, you know, if you get good enough at, at, at a technique, you, you get pretty damn fast at it. But at the same time, like, I mean, like Mike's level painting. Every time I go to an event or something, I look for painters like what Mike does, yeah. and so I can just sit there and stare at their stuff, right? You know, it's yeah, oh, yeah. Put, it's great. put that level of work in there. Let's make let's let's make no mistake about it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's well, pretty awesome. So, so yeah. if you notice too, like something like Mike by far has the most complicated paint scheme, um, just like in uh, like like color scheme, and then the three of us have real striking armies that are incredibly simple. Mm -hmm. So like, just like, like predominantly dark blue or predominantly, you know, light blue or predominantly yellow. And then there's tons of detail within there. But if you start with just like a plan and work the plan, right. Mm -hmm. It's, it's simple and, and can, and it can look incredible when it's done as an army, right. The, the, regardless of how much, actual skill or like everyone here is obviously skill has some level of skill right but like uh, i think a lot of people think oh man i could never paint a 2000 point army in a in a year and here we are in well, it's less than nine year, months actually. or yeah. something nine yeah months we, we were nine or ten months there. right um when did we start february or march may i thought right yeah, I think it was may, may. 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 So that's only seven months technically okay so yeah, that's seven may, months yeah. right and and so there's <laughs> what you've got here now you've got someone like me who put a just a you know not a couple hours but a you know a limited amount of time every single month just you know consistently the rest of you guys had put in more effort like as far as like painting time and painting techniques and things like that and so you have this whole gamut you can run um you know if you just start with a plan and and kind of work it yeah just honestly take it and split it up into smaller chunks uh you could even split like the uh the units of like my big unit of um men at arms it's 36 i could split that into two quite easily you know for each month but like yeah do a unit a month to be honest that's enough unless and and then unless you're going to an event that requires painting <clears throat> you don't need to feel like you're being rushed so yeah I, I yeah i hope everybody just sees that painting an army is not that not that hard you know it, it takes time but you can split up that time across a long period and it doesn't feel like anything at all and just remember too <laughs> if you're painting old world um Paint those banners, those champions, those musicians, man, and make them look real nice because those are the last three models that are going to be in your unit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're going to be the ones that are up front the entire time, what everybody sees. Everything else, cut some corners, baby. You know? Yeah, dry brush those peasants. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, one thing that, that this has taught me is to, the, to maybe try something different, right? Because I'm seeing how fast everybody else is getting their units done, and I'm sitting here stressing out just trying to get it done in time right so um i think moving moving on from here especially with the 3d printer is going to give me that 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 extra oomph behind it because now i can just print out a model and i can test out a scheme it works, right it works, and it see how fast i can exactly yeah. dude so that's that's the one thing i'm pumped about is maybe i can just start knocking models out a little bit faster than i usually but do even um uh you know our friend vince he uh he just keeps an ogre on his desk. He's reprimed and repainted it and stripped that ogre so many times. It's just I've seen that. yeah. I he just holds up. He's like, about. I'm gonna test this out. <laughs> it works. Yep. It doesn't work. Okay. Dude, he's used that. He's used that ogre for like eight years now. Yep. It's hilarious, man. I would I would never strip that. I would just keep painting over it until the ogre was actually twice as big as what it actually. And then just get another <laughs> get another ogre. <laughs> uh. Well, uh, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me on this journey. Because, I, like I said, this is something you. I always wanted to do yep. with Tale for Warlords, even though it's a scheduling nightmare. Uh, I blame Ohio, not you guys. Um, <laughs> we just happen to live there. But 
It's in the water. Yeah. <laughs> But no, yeah, it was super fun, and I, I enjoyed it. So thank you for, you know, helping me keep on pace and not rush through an army in two weeks to not play it, because that's yeah. that's what I got from this. I actually took my time, and you know, till the very end, and I kind of pushed at the end because I wanted to play a game. But yeah, like I, I think we've all learned lessons, and it's pretty good stuff. So I will um, maybe try to do a, a an Instagram post with all of our stuff on it, so people can just take a look at our our armies um terry I, you're not on, you're not on instagram so uh, his name oh be... i am oh you oh are. yes i am oh. you better find me dude find will... me holler at me dog I'll, I, will find you. I will find you so that way i can tag you on it and we can yeah we can, we can share it with amongst everybody so perfect that's right i've i've been posting in uh my army progress in the warhammer old world group on facebook nice yeah. um and uh been linking your link in the podcast underneath there too in case we get any stragglers sweet all right well, if you're from there, thank you. Welcome. Like and subscribe. Uh, Terry doing the PR support. I refuse to do because I'm lazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, let's let's see. Maybe, maybe we'll do something like this again. Maybe it'll be the same faces. Maybe it'll be different armies, different game system, or maybe it'll be a different group here in a little while. But yeah, I, it's something I'd like to try and do again, even if it's just internally and not recorded. So that way we can really talk shit on each other. But <laughs> <laughs> all right. But I look forward to crushing all of you on the table with my beautiful Bretonian army. Okay, no, no, I was right. like, like, no arguments. All right, I'll take that. I, uh, my, my sister's shooting 360 as well, so I know, I know, my army is. Bring that shit to me, Matt. You're gonna, you're gonna kill everything but my Pegasus knights, and hopefully my Pegasus. Oh knights no, those are the ones. That, those are the things getting shot, my friend. <laughs> all right, well, thank you guys. Uh, uh, I, I, I will, like I said, I'll put up that post and. You know, if you're new to the channel, please stick around for the podcast that we do uh, almost every week with me and Neil and, and our friend Alex. But yeah, thanks for joining us on this Tale of Four Warlords, everybody. And if you are doing a Tale of Four Warlords along with us, let us know below where we can find it so we can go see how cool your army is because a painted army is cool as shit. Mm -hmm. All right, everybody. Take care, and we will see you next time. Bye, guys.